Okay, Sunday, we're back on the applicator again. Um, I want to finish the Visigage mount first. That way I can get some paint thrown on it today. Um, and then once I get done with this, we will go back to working on the hitch, which is laying there on the ground. Um, so, couldn't or didn't have any luck finding anybody that had any stainless steel quarter inch pipe unions or I guess it'd be a coupling not a union um in stock people could get them but it didn't make a whole lot of sense to just order one so um one of dad's places that he has or that does fabrication for him and that he buys steel from um had this stainless steel drop laying around that he got so we're gonna make our own coupling um it is stainless so you're gonna have to be careful drilling it and make sure it stays cool um run a little slower make sure it doesn't work harden because stainless things so that's crooked um i guess we'll just figure out how long I want it and then we can cut a chunk off and I can face both sides if I made that all right I cut it an inch and I'll touch over an inch and a quarter to give me some meat to be able to face it off and square the ends up <laughs> like working with stainless mostly because one I don't have a whole lot of experience with it because I don't really work with stainless don't really need to and stainless is very finicky and it'll work hard in and do all sorts of very fun stuff And then you're breaking tools, dulling tools, it's just... covered in coolant because because this is stainless you gotta run a slower chuck speed and run coolant that way you don't heat the part up work hard in your stainless and then next thing you know you're trying to drill through rock so
just about through it according to the scale on the chuck. Seven sixteenths drill, which is the tap drill for a quarter inch pipe tap. chamfer on it so that the tap starts. I'm not gonna power tap this because a I got well, I want to go in a certain depth and b I want to be able to feel what the taps doing so well, I'll just get set up and you'll see. Okay, so in order to hand tap this, I've got a center point in the chuck which engages that little dimple in the back of the tap. So you put your tap up to the hole. And then you lock down the tail stock. And then you could use the tail stock of the lathe to put pressure on the tap. I have the tap marked to my insertion depth, which I'm actually going to stop just a tad shy of. And then you can just take a crescent wrench and applying pressure to the tail stock. Oh, and you want to put this in low, low gear so that the motor breaks the chuck, or breaks as in, like, locks the chuck up so that you're not turning the chuck with the tap. And then once you get a few threads in, which I'm just about confident enough, you can back the tap tailstock all the way off because the tap is started and it's centered, so you don't need the guide anymore. Uh, 
Okay, so there's the finished side. And here's the side we still got to do yet. Um, so all I got to do on this side is face it off and tap it, and then it'll be done. Okay, so it won't really focus. Here's the finished product. So, obviously one of the downsides to pipe is you never really know which angle it's going to be at when it tightens up. And because of how this is going to be, we really want the gauge facing the tractor so that you can actually read it, not like cocked at an angle like this or cocked at an angle like that or back here or whatever. Because the shitty part about pipe is when it's tight, you're either going to have to back it off to get it to the angle you want it and pray it won't leak or try to over tighten it and that doesn't necessarily work with a brass stem on a gauge so what we're going to do is we throw this little guy in the vise if the vise will grab the stainless because it's slick And I need a wrench, which I wonder if that's standard or something metric. Well, I guess since it's pipe thread, chances are it's probably standard, but dumber things have happened. I bet it's metric. I don't want to round it off. Uh, metric equivalent to a 9 16 is like a 14 maybe. Friggin' metric crap. Oh yeah, it's metric. So. We're gonna tighten the gauge up. If the dang vice will grip this stainless. Come on. Cooperate with me. And now that the gauge is in there and tight, we can take a nice little sharpie and put a mark on it so that we know which position the gauge is in when it's tight. And when I go to weld it into my flat stock, I can put that mark facing the tractor so that when we put the gauge in, the gauge will be oriented right so you can actually see it from the seat. So I'm going to finish getting this fabbed up real quick. All it is is going to, all it's going to be is a piece of flat stock with a hole drilled in it, welded to the top of this with that welded in it. So I'm not going to show it for sake of keeping the video short-ish. So I'll finish this up real quick and we'll be right back. And there's the finished product. So in practice, you'll have your flow meters mounted here, your pressure gauge mounted here. The T and the flow meters will be right here. And then you'll have a little gauge hose coming out the back with a push to connect fitting and a push to connect fitting up here. And you just run a little gauge hose in between the two and you're good to go. So I'm going to clean this thing up real quick and throw some primer on it. And we'll be back to the hitch. All right, so I worked ahead a little bit to get the setup ready. Um, so I laid out on the plates. Well, first off, I made sure the plates are square to the frame. And surprisingly, they were square just the way they are. I didn't have to move them any. So the plates are square to the frame, got that out of the way. Um, and then I laid out with lines where the hitch is gonna land. So this is gonna be the edge, top, bottom. And then I put these cleats on here to have something to set the box tube on so that we're not trying to balance crap and anything like that. So the legs will set on these two cleats. And then once I had them on there and clamped, I took a square, went off the top edge of, top edge of both and made sure that the cleats were, they're going to end up being six and a quarter to the bottom of the tube. 
so my lines were off a little bit when I drew them on but that was fine I just needed them there to get the cleats started so now the cleats are both the same height from the top of the plates and they're square to this edge so everything's everything's square so we set the hitch up there on those cleats and the last thing I got to figure out is what I can do to support the end of it because that's going to have to be a little adjustable so that it can so we can square it up to the frame if I pick this up and scooch it over some I should be able to get the forklift back here and I can use that so hold on all right here's how it's going to look I got everything squared up the way it needs to be so go ahead and get it tacked in there good luckily it's a fairly calm day trees aren't really moving so hopefully I don't have a bunch of shitty tacks but we shall see get it tacked up and then get it back off and take it inside and finish welding it but it's got to be tacked up on here I'm half tempted to try laying a bead, but sure as shit, if I try laying a bead, the breeze is going to pick up and it's going to end up all porous. But as long as I can let the forklift down, man. Just leave the forklift where it's sitting. Because now that that's tacked up, we got to do the, the upper support. Because I don't want to weld this in until I can get these corners welded. Because once this is in, I don't know if I'll be able to get a... Because even the way it is, getting a gun in there to weld that is going to be pretty tight. So let's get, let's get this piece in. More freaking angles to cut, but let's get that piece in and then I'll... We'll be good. Well, we... I was hoping to find some 2x2 two two box tube for this, but there wasn't any. And I was trying to not use a bunch of use up a bunch of dad's good steel. But what we did have an abundance of, and this piece of we had an abundance of two-inch heavy wall pipe. And this has been laying around so long, it's got clover white overspray on it from when we were painting parts on the 1955. So if it's been around that long, I figured I might as well burn some of this up. All it's got to do is be a, a, a strut, so it, ain't, it doesn't have to be box tube. I was just going to use box tube to have it look, some, have some sort of continuity, but this will do the job. 
in all reality, it doesn't even really have to support that much weight because it's not going to have any tongue weight on it. I'm screwing with my helmet. There we go. ought to not go anywhere so we should be able to take it off and take it inside and get it on the bench and weld it for good That looks real nice, Clark. Got the truss welded in. Everything's all welded up. These guys back in here were... It was tight, but they turned out pretty good. The only welds I fought... And I, I, I think it's because I just so happened to cut these off right at a spot where there was some pretty bad like pitted rust and I cleaned it up the best I could but sand, a sandblaster would have been the only thing to take care of it perfect but for some reason this weld and the same weld on that side I laid the first pass in and they came out all porous and nasty looking and bleh and naturally you can't get in there to grind them out so I laid a second pass over it and they cleaned up but those are the only everything else welded welded really nice actually so now hopefully it still fits we can bolt it back on there because like i say this is not going to get painted right now because it will probably end up getting more brackets welded to it for holding hoses and other assorted things so there's no sense in throwing any paint on it and like with these tight spaces in here in order to get the old paint off damn you're gonna have to have it sandblasted now because you ain't gonna get a grinder in there to clean anything up so We'll put it on there, make sure everything fits, and it can stay on there for now. The paint on that's drying, so that's probably not going to be able to go on until tomorrow. Um, but once this is back on, we should be able to start, and it probably won't finish it today, but should be able to start in on the new pump out. Where did I lay that? That guy right there. 
and there it is mounted up um i figured there's no sense until we get the cart made um i figure there's not much sense in making the second part of the the there the receiver i guess this is the receiver the plug-in part of the hitch until we get the cart made and we can get the cart made and then make the hitch to match what we've come up with for the cart rather than trying rather than making a hitch thinking it needs to be the way it needs to be and then screw ourselves and make it that much harder to build the cart so we'll get the cart built first and then finish this but this was the hard part so and that was actually the hard part of the whole thing everything else is all downhill from here all right so we had to we have to do this step for two reasons first off um this cross pin that does this this piece here that the wheel bolts to and that's got a spring on it and everything rocks on here like an axle so that it's got float to follow the ground well this pin right here had been broke and everything was welded in there so it wasn't serving it's not like you could take it apart and replace the pin the pin was like they slid everything together stuck it inside this channel and then welded it all in there's no way to get the pin back up. the pin was welded to this it's just it, it had to be cut apart to be fixed and this was made to bolt to uh if i remember right it was six by six box tube was the biggest it could go to we need seven by seven so we had to elongate it and put a wider hole spread in it so that it would span my frame so what we got to do is we're going to drill a hole in in both in both ears that way we can slide a pin all the way through and probably what we'll do is uh drill and tap both sides of it and just put bolts in it with what with heavy washers to retain it um the pipes that will be in here will be drilled and tapped for grease zerk so that you can actually grease it so that the pins can't seize up and break like this one did and there will be a socket here um probably drilled for a set screw which actually if you put a set screw at if you put a set screw in here and dog point it you wouldn't even need retaining bolts because the set screw would do two things it would lock the pin from being able to move side to side and it would lock the pin so that it rotates um but that'll do obviously multiple things it'll be it'll make it to where you can remove all this without having to unbolt it from the toolbar if something bad happens to the pin gets broke bent whatever you can knock it back out and replace it it's greasable so that it won't seize up or wear um basically just better all the way around so first things first we got to get our holes punched and um i'm actually gonna have dad come out here and talk with it talk it over with him real quick just to make sure we were both on the same page because he he had a plan and i think i followed along but i just want to make sure so um and i don't know honestly how much more i'm going to do on this today because it's about three o'clock and it's kind of nice outside and honestly i'm thinking i might get stuff put away and uh go home and play with the mini in the woods for a little while since it's nice out but we will uh, at least, I'm going to get Dad out here and we'll at least get parts rounded up so that tomorrow we can hammer this out because there really ain't a whole lot to it. All right, it's kind of chilly and it's getting windier and I think I decided that I don't finish one job before you start making another mess so I ain't going to go home and play in the woods because I just don't need to be going and starting more than one thing. So we're going to keep working away at this. Uh, got some mechanical tubing. Uh, it's about inch and seven eighths ish OD. 
and a little under inch and an eighth ID, which will bore out for an inch and a quarter pin. So upsizing the pin, originally it was one inch. Now we're going an inch and a quarter to make it to where, hope. well, obviously that one was too small, otherwise it wouldn't have broke. And especially since now we're pushing, the, we're going to be pushing the wheel off the front rather than dragging it, that's that much more stress it's going to be under. So, bigger pin, bigger sleeves. Um, in order to get the geometry right, once I get this pin cut off of here, I'm going to have to take a hole saw or something and actually cut out a scallop all the way through that'll let that new sleeve kind of set down in like a cradle to keep the pin hole or to keep the pin centered where it is now um and then rather than a set screw probably gonna drill this for a roll pin um so that's kind of the plan so we can get a piece of steel cut I'll need to be um trying to decide do I cut it and we'll cut it as three separate pieces. It's about seven and a quarter inside. Or no, seven and three quarters inside, sorry. So, what's that going to come out to? So I basically need three pieces, two and five eighths, and then we can face them off and put them in the lathe and turn them down to the right length because it comes out to 2.583. Nice round number. Okay, I've got three sleeves cut. And they are oversized so that we can take them down to size. And I got a pin cut, which the pin will just need a cross hole drilled in it for a split, uh, spring pin. And we're going to face the end, the ends off just to square them up and make them look decent. sleeves we're gonna go through all three of them get one side faced off and square and then we can flip them all or flip them around and do all three and get them sized correctly <laughs> So here is a complete one. Well, other than obviously the hole, the 
the it needs board for the pin but the the length is complete and so that's a complete one next to one that's only had one side done and since i went, went through and did this one and snuck up on the size now because these bottom out in the back of the chuck that x is a zero so i can just turn the, the other two back to the same point i turned that one to and they should all turn out the same then we can test fit them and then the one in the center we will actually take just a fuzz more off to give it a little bit more clearance for just so stuff doesn't get in the bind gives it a path for grease to sneak out and stuff like that this out real quick just to check it and make sure because it's easier to take more off than it is to put more on and yep oh i should just be able to run this right back to can actually stand to have a fuzz more taken off Fifty-eight, right on the money. Okay, they are in. I got plenty of clearance for the center one. I ended up leaving the center one fat and uh, shortening the two outside ones just to make sure that uh, they stay in the right order. Oh, actually. 
just to make sure they stay in the right order so I don't do that when I weld it together. I letter stamped them. I got O, M, O, just outside and middle. So they are turned to size. Now we can bore them for the pin, which I don't know what time is it. I think we might save that for tomorrow because by the time I get everything cleaned up and put away, it's going to be five o'clock and I don't feel like having a long night tonight since it's Sunday. So with that being said, I think this is a good stopping point and we will catch you guys on the next one. Okay, real quick, I'm going to tack this onto here just because I was thinking about it while I was cleaning stuff up and it's not a bad pot to stick it in here. Um, I always get people asking me how I learned all this stuff. Um, obviously my dad, I'm not, a machinist isn't the way to describe him, although he's a, he is a really good machinist, but his business, he's not a machinist but he does industrial and mobile hydraulics, but part of that is being a machinist, hence why we have that lathe in this bridge port. Um, but, and I can't remember, I remember going to pick these up. It was before, I can't even remember how old I was. One of my dad's friends had like, had like an, late 90s OBS Ford F-150 it was two-tone red with two-tone red and white really sharp old truck with a cap on it and he had an orange like it was his tractor hauler it was an orange like 18 20 foot deck over trailer that we went and picked these up from dad bought them from a motorcycle shop that was going out of business um I know the Bridgeport's in 1966. I can't remember what year the lathe is. I think the lathe is actually older than the Bridgeport yet. But anyway, I remember going and getting them, but I was just a little, I was a little, little. And I remember we had a hard-tired Mitsubishi forklift, 5,000, four or 5,000 pound that dad was actually renting from the neighbor up there because the neighbor used to work for Town Air Freight, which was a, sh a local shipping company here. And whenever they would rotate their forklifts out, he would buy the junkers fix them up and sell them and that he had that mitsubishi that dad had for years before he bought our clark and it was a hard tire and now that thing was just about worthless around here but i remember we had that mitsubishi forklift on that f-150 in that trailer i'm pretty sure it was the, i'm pretty sure it was his f-150 maybe dad borrowed the trailer and we used that old night red 96 i used to drive because that was dad's truck it was one way or the other, either either, we, either dad borrowed the trailer and we used his 96 or it was that red F-150, either way. Which, I'm getting off topic here, that's, that's how we ended up with them. But how I learned to run this stuff was that right there. My Uncle Everett, which I thought he put a stamp on this, he had a wood, he had one of those, yep, yeah, right there. Handcrafted by Everett D. Crouch. Um, he was a woodworker. He was a World War II Marine vet who we didn't find out until after he died and people started going through his stuff because he made it. I don't think he made it to 100. It seems like he was 97, 98 when he passed away. And I really miss... I, I wish I was older when he was still around because... He was a cool dude. Like, he was probably the coolest guy I have ever met and will ever meet in my life. And that was before I even knew anything about what he did in World War II. But I guess he was kind of a badass. But they didn't find out till they found all of his medals and newspaper clippings and stuff. And he was only like, I mean, he was like five foot nothing. He was a short little guy. But anyway, I'll, I, should, I should talk about him a little bit next time we get to like Memorial Day or Veterans Day or something. But anyway, he made me that stool. I had one and my sister had one. Mine was blue and hers was uh, like a purple. Hers is actually still under the bench. But back when I was too short to be able to see what was going on, I would put on 
these safety glasses. That's how long these things have been around, which at the time were way, way, way too big for my face. And I would stand there on that stool because that's what dad did when he got home from work during, at the time dad was working his full-time job and then doing this on the side before he went off on his own. And that was the only way I could spend time with dad at that point because he would work his eight hours or however long he would be working at that point. Sometimes it's more than eight hours at, at his job where he was a machine builder. And then he'd come home and have to do stuff for the business. So for me to be able to spend time with him, I would just stand here on this stool next to him and watch him for hours and hours and hours and hours, either running this or running the lathe, which on the lathe, obviously I didn't need the stool, but so, and then for welding, I had this welding helmet, which again, you're talking, I was like five, six, seven years old at the time, was way, 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 like this thing did not go small enough to fit me. So in order to make that work, I would have to take a hat and put it on backwards to make my head big enough for that helmet to fit. And even then I would, I couldn't, you know, you, you dip your head to flip your helmet down. I couldn't do that, it'd just fall right off. So I had to pull it down and hold it with my hand. But I would sit for hours and just watch dad weld. That's what we did. And actually, hold on, we'll take a walk. Some of the first stuff, because this, back when dad first started, the vast majority of what he did was off site. So he had this trailer, which it used to be a lot more full than this. But since he started, things have changed a lot and he doesn't hard, this trailer hardly ever leaves anymore. Basically now it's tool storage. It might get out on the road every once in a while, but the frame's so rotten and everything, it's really not road worthy anymore. It's a 90 something, it's been around for a while. But the first stuff that I remember that I, well, I remember working on a yard trailer with him, which we still have, it's up at the farm. But at that point, he still had a stick welder. He didn't have the wire welder yet. And I remember I remember watching him stick weld that. But the first stuff that I have any record that I really kind of remember watching build was the stuff here in this trailer, this fitting cart, um, that, uh, buck bar that actually goes through the floor and is welded to the frame of the trailer. I remember welding that together. I remember welding this cart together for the flare machine. I remember welding this workbench together, um, putting all this stuff in the trailer. But this is, this is some of the first stuff that I have much recollection of actually watching dad weld together. So that's what I had for you. I, I, I get that question somewhat regularly about how I learned all this stuff. So that's, it's, it's the simple stuff. So anyhow, that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one.